America is not about snatching babies from the arms of their mothers. America is not about criminalizing a mother and daughter who walk a thousand miles to escape violence and poverty. And I'll tell you what America is also not about. America is not about politicians telling women what they could do with their bodies. You know, I get amazed by the hypocrisy of my Republican colleagues who every day get up on the floor of the Senate and they say, we believe in small government. We believe in getting, go you've all heard that, right? Getting government out of the lives of the American, do what you want to do, it's your life, except if you are a woman who wants to control her own body. So let me tell you where I think we are as a nation politically. It goes without saying that we have got to do everything that we can to defeat Donald Trump. That goes without saying. But we have got to do more than that. We have got to take a deep breath and understand something that we don't talk about very much as a nation. And that is, what are the economic rights of human beings? What are we entitled to as human beings? You know, way back in 1944, Franklin Delano Roosevelt gave a speech. And what he said is, you know, we got a lot of political freedoms in America, freedom of religion, freedom of, uh, to vote, freedom of assembly, and all that, the Bill of Rights. But what we don't have, this is back in 1944, are fundamental economic rights. And what this campaign is about is redefining what human rights are in America. So let me be as clear as I can be. In this country, it must be a human right for all of our people to have access to a decent paying job. And God knows there is enough work to do rebuilding our infrastructure, transforming our energy system, taking care of our elderly, taking care of our kids, and having the best education system in the world. A lot of work there. It is a human right to have health care and go to the doctor when you need to go to the doctor. It is a human right to have quality education and be able to get all the education you need regardless of your income. And here in California and all over this country, it is a human right to have affordable housing. We are going to end the disgrace. You know, one of the things that bothers me is we have gotten used to the fact that here in L.A. or San Francisco or Burlington, Vermont, that we have people sleeping out on the streets. This is America. We must never, never accept homelessness as a normal, as a normal. And that is why, together, we will build the millions of units of affordable housing this country desperately needs. <laughs> Toxic water does not just exist in Flint, Michigan. Toxic water exists in California. It exists in Vermont, and it exists all over this country. We are going to rebuild our infrastructure so that every American who turns on that faucet knows that the water he or she drinks is clean and healthy. And when our people get old and seek retirement, 
We are going to do exactly the opposite of what Republicans want. They want to cut Social Security. We are going to expand Social Security benefits. So our job as a people is to think outside of the box, not accept what the media tells you is reality. You know what reality is. You know what we can do as a country. This is the wealthiest country in the world. We should not have 40 million people living in poverty. We should not have more income and wealth inequality than at any time since the 1920s. But at the end of the day, and this is the main point that I want to make to you, if we have the courage to think big, and if we have the courage to envisage the kind of nation that we want to become, a nation where we have eliminated poverty, a nation where all people have the health care they need as a human right, a nation in which all people can get the education they need, a nation in which we are leading the world in fighting climate change, a nation in which we're not throwing people into jail but getting them decent jobs, a nation in which we're not demonizing immigrants but establishing a path towards citizenship. A nation which finally addresses the institutional racism which is so rampant in America. This is not utopian dreaming. At the end of the day, the 1%, and I deal with them every day, they are enormously powerful. They influence what goes on on television. They own the TV. They own the newspapers. All right. They own our economy. They own our political system with massive campaign contributions. But at the end of the day, the 1% is 1%. We are 99%. And if we stand up and do not allow Trump and his friends to divide us up, if we keep our eyes on the prize of creating the kind of humane society we can become, if we are prepared to get deeply involved in the political process, if we are prepared to tell our friends and neighbors that we're tired of hearing them complain that they have got to get involved in the political process. Brothers and sisters, if we do all of that, we can create an extraordinary country that the whole world will be looking to for leadership. Thank you all very much.